Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Elevate. My name is Jessica. And my name is Jarwin. And today we're going to be talking about, should you be giving out your services for free? So I want to say that it truly depends on what, why. Like, is, is it an exchange? Is What's the purpose? Because giving your services for free, sometimes as nice as, as we want to be sometimes with certain people, just takes away the value from your work. But I also do feel like there's a time and place to be free and to charge for your work. And this goes for like any profession. It's not just like for us that we're content creators. This, this is across the board. Yeah, but this resonates a lot with content creators specifically, photographers, videographers, uh, people who have makeup artists, makeup ha- artists, hairstylists, hairstylists, anybody who has like a talent. Um, that people would otherwise pay for the like creative art in a sense right and so what i've noticed is that when you like i like you said there's a time and place for everything and there are certain circumstances where you can provide your service for free because it's being it's an exchange of values for example you met with someone who's also a creator and you are a videographer they are a makeup artist and you guys want to collab to make a vision that you both have um, a reality. Yeah. And so you work as a team to make this uh, vision that you guys have to make it part of your portfolio as a professional. In that case, you're paying each other. Yeah. Because the makeup artist, that's, that's valuable. If he doesn't, doesn't have you, he would have to pay someone for that. And you as a videographer or photographer are also providing a service to that person. Mm-hmm. So it's an exchange of values. People, you can't expect a person to fully give you their services for free and you have nothing to offer in return. Yeah, and I feel like it depends on like how a person puts it. Like If you reach out to somebody and say, like, hey, I want you to do my makeup for free. Like, okay, so what, what, are you get, what am I getting out of this? Because you have to be bringing value to that person, too. Like, am I just doing your makeup because you're going out to dinner? Like, what is that doing Mm -hmm. for me? And free work, even though it's free, if you use it properly, I'll put, like, my my example. Like, when I was starting photography, like, I, in the beginning, I had to do, like, free work. Mm -hmm. It wasn't free work. It was collaborations or people that I reach out to, like, hey, I'll do your photos. And it's, it's more because I needed the practice. Right, right. So you were where you were getting out of it was practice. A perf- and I was building my portfolio. Right, and you were also uh, getting marketing in some cases. And networking. Right. So it was an exchange mm-hmm. still. A strategic <laughs> It was an exchange. But you can't, you know, just come empty-handed and just expect another individual to want to collaborate with you if you're not bringing anything to the table. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, let's say, not speaking in terms of other content creators, because that's really like, let's say another person wants to be a content creator and they're trying to collab with you. But in terms of like family, friends, what I've noticed is that when you give your services for free, people stop seeing the value in your work. Even if you have, if you've spent hours in training and learning your craft, people will not see the value in your work when they don't pay for it. It's very unfortunate. mm -hmm. And I think it's crazy. I hate to even say that, but it's the reality. And I've also, I heard this from another creator. I can't think of their name right now. They were also speaking on the same thing of how, when you give your services to a person just for no reason. I mean, you can do it at any point in time. Like, Babe has done a photo shoot for his um, goddaughter because he wanted to give yeah. it to her as a gift. You know, it came out of him. He wanted to do that. And we've done shoots for, like, my sister, you know, like, Christmas, whatever. And But it, he wanted to do that. But let's say a friend just comes to you. You haven't spoken to them in, like, months, years, and they're just using you as a contact because they think they re or they reach out to you because they think, Oh no, I know this person. They're going to give me a discount or they're Mm going to give me the the photos for free. And they haven't spoken to you in months. I feel like it's so disrespectful to me and my time 
because I get it. Things are hard and it sounds so appealing to just get this work done by a friend of yours and not have to pay anything. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? But the fact that it, the fact of the matter is even for people like us, we are, we work jobs full time, nine to fives, the stuff that we do on the side, we do on our spare time. Mm -hmm. And for us to have to take away from the time that we are spending with our kids, with our family, with our spouses to give you a free photo shoot is very inconsiderate. And you guys should really think about it before you do something like that, because, and this is not just like to our, we were speaking like right, in general, in general. Yeah. but it, it happens a lot. And I've heard other creators talk about this as well. And it, and it puts us in a very uncomfortable space because I could be cool with you. I can love you as a person, but that still doesn't mean that you should take advantage. Yeah, because oh. once once you feel like this person is taking advantage of you, it it just the relationship turns yeah. sour because now it it feels like it's not out of like oh we respect each other and love each other. It's more like a an exchange type of relationship or like you're expecting something from me every time we we go somewhere or something right. like that. It's like a convenience type mm -hmm. of thing for you. Like, are you my friend because it's convenient for you or yeah. you can get something from me? Like, there's people like that who actually, they, they maintain a relationship with you because they know they can get something from you. But it's funny because most of the time, the person that's, let's say, being taken advantage of knows. Like, they already have a hint and they just do it to do it. But they, they kind of move differently because they now they see you as like, oh, this guy's just trying to use me. Like, it's, right. it's happened many times, even to me, like, in the gym. Like, when, when me and Chino go to the gym, like, there are people that will come up to us and be like, oh, you bring your camera? Like, mm -hmm. can you say hello? Good morning? Yeah. Like, what type of thing? And that always, always irked me. Like, damn, you can, you don't even see me as a person. You're just like, oh, this is the guy with the camera. Right. Or these are the guys with the camera. Right. And then so, it makes it even worse if they're the type of people who – don't really support you like that exactly. online thing, yeah. <laughs> and they're not supporting like your journey or anything, but they're, they're ready, fully loaded, ready to take advantage of anything you have to offer, mm -hmm. you know, that's convenient to them. And it just really speaks about very badly about some people. Um, but yeah, I think that you should just be considerate of other people's time, energy and money because time is money. And anytime that you ask a person also know that when a person such as a creator, a photographer, a videographer, a makeup artist, a hairstylist offers their services to you and they charge you nothing because they feel like not mm -hmm. charging you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Because especially like photography, I always, I always find it amazing how sometimes, how do I say this? <laughs> Some people pay hundreds, thousands, if not thousands of dollars to get professional pictures taken by a professional. And some people get them without much hesitation. Mm -hmm. And it almost feels like, eh, like they don't really appreciate yeah. your hard work because they don't understand the work that was put behind that photo. Like the, the arrangement that had to happen for that photo to happen. But the, the thing is that people don't see is like, for example, if you was to tell me like, hey, I want a headshot, like I can set up a headshot in, in 10 minutes, right? Because I, I just know I've done it so long and I know how to do it. But what the value in that is how long it takes me to set that up. Like if you was to go to somebody who doesn't know how to set something like that up and you're paying them and you walk in and this person is like trying to figure out how to do a simple headshot, you're like, wait a minute, like I'm paying this guy for this? But now when you go to a professional and you're paying that, that amount of money, it's for that reason because they have that expertise. The knowledge. Exactly. But some people see it as, oh, my God, but you're going to charge me that much for a headshot? Like, yeah. it's so simple. It's just, like, it's click the button. 30 minutes, yeah. Like, you did that in 30 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. But what you're paying for is the time that that person spent on learning mm -hmm. how to do all these. All of these skills that he has acquired, some skills cost money. Some skills just cost them a lot of time, trial and error. And what you're paying for is the expertise. And and another thing that I feel... Because if it were that easy, then just grab a camera and do it yourself, right? Pretty much. <laughs> but it's not because there's a science behind it. And that's why everybody needs to 
really um, appreciate everybody's professions and just, yeah, just be appreciative of what people do and respectful. Agreed. This also ties into, like, there's times that, like, I want people, like, I see a vision in people. Like, it could be a friend. It could be somebody. I'm like, yo, like, you could do this. Like, I know, like, some people tell us, like, I know you guys could do it. I know you guys could do it. And we we usually execute, like, when people are telling us something. But We like that, but not everybody. But you see the potential in somebody. And, like, you, me, like, I'm in, you know, I'm in media, like, a production company pretty much. And I tell you, and I give you the game plan, like, do this, this, and that. And you want to do it, but you don't do it. And I even sometimes go as far as, like, to helping them start. I've I've done countless logos for people just to start. I've done photo shoots. I've done, like, full marketing. Wasting my time, like, setting up a whole social media or something like that. And, like, the person doesn't take full advantage because I do it for free. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But... For me, it, it don't matter that, that I did it for free because I did it because I, I wanted, wanted to do it. it. Mm -hmm. And I know what I bring to the table. And I'm like, okay, this will set you up to be great. Yeah, this this will elevate your work or make it look more professional. Without having for you to, without you having to put crazy amount of money down. Mm -hmm. So when I see a person doesn't take advantage of that, it, it kind of hurts. Like in a way, even though it's not, you're not laying down cash. You kind of made an investment in their mm -hmm. in their potential. Yeah. Because otherwise they would have had to hire someone to do what you did for them for free. But the thing is that because you've done it for them for free, they don't see the value in it. And this is what people need to understand. It's not about us being, you know, egoistas or just being to ourselves and thinking, mm -hmm. I'm not going to help you. No, it's not about that. It's about one we ourselves really don't have time. <laughs> a lot of people don't, you know, especially if, if it's a creator who does creating part-time. That's one. But secondly, the person just doesn't get that urge to move forward yeah. if they get it for free. It's a, it's, it's a psychological thing. Yeah. I, I, they just, just don't. It feels different when you're dropping down hundreds to pay for something than... Somebody's been like, oh, here, here's the whole the whole thing. Just go run with it. And again, this this is not just for us. This, this is, applies for everybody. Yeah, I for, mean, it would even be, I, I think for us at this point, if somebody was to do that for us, I think we would take full advantage of it yeah. because of the point in time that we are in our lives and the stuff that we're feeding our brain. We know it's very important. But for many people, I, I mean, I could just say a couple years back from today, we might we might have fallen into the same thing mm -hmm. where if a person gives us something and we don't pay a dollar for it it's like you take you're more laid back about it it's like there's no rush i didn't really pay for this like oh thanks you know you're excited oh my god this is so nice but you do nothing with it because you didn't lose any money yeah you're not losing any sleep over it it's not really stressing you out when you have to put in the hard work when you have to spend money to make your dream business, whatever it is that you're working on, a reality, you will take it seriously. But if you don't, then people tend to just be more laid back and just not take full advantage of it. And that's why sometimes we think that we're doing people a favor by, let's say, facilitating mm -hmm. a step into making their business happen. But the reality is we're not. Yeah. We're not doing them a favor because you're debilitating that person because you're not allowing them to go through their process mm -hmm. the way they should. And and I know, like, sometimes as friends, as family, what we want to do is jump in and help. Jump in and just do what you know they should be doing because, let's say, you have more experience in the in the area or if you've seen other people do it and you maybe you have the knowledge that they don't. And you want to just jump in and do it for them. But what you're doing is you're taking away their ability to to really grow through their process. And I think that's key. Like, it's important for every person's growth. Yeah. Why, why do you feel like it is that people don't, uh, I would say mostly minorities, because we, we come from that, we are, like, don't take advantage. Is it because they see us or anybody who's given the advice 
and they're like, oh, you haven't made it yet. Like, well, what are you talking about? That could be part of it. But I feel like people who... But what does that have to do with your business? I'm still giving you a head start if I'm helping you in any aspect of you starting your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everything is different. For example, for us, like, like I, I master photography. Like, I can say I master video, and, and I know how to do these things. And we're in the business right now, and it might not, let's say, show an example, but we also have probably one of the hardest profession professions, which is, like, growing a social media, growing an audience, finding people to like what we do and consistently do it. Like, it, it's not easy. It's definitely right? not. Like, being in people's eyes and negative comments and people saying you suck and this and that. So from what we do and we see, we talk and network with so many other people and we give you that information for free. Right. Like things we learn is like here on a silver platter. Like these are the steps you need to do. Do it this way. Trust me, it's going to work because it's just going to work. We, we know what, what we're in. And the person is just like, nah. Yeah, because they don't understand. They don't understand. It stresses me it's, out. It's, it's, it's like being a parent and having children and telling them, Mira, don't do this because, you know, hello, I've been mm -hmm. there, done that. But what happens? Your children looks at you like, ah, mami se habla mucho. Yeah. She's just talking too much. They don't want to because they've never been in your shoes. They've never experienced what you've experienced. And sometimes... People just have to learn the hard way and they have to have their own experiences. That's just how it works. It sucks, but that's the way it is. And experiences and trials and tribulations is what make people strong. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, you can always be available to for advice. If a person comes to you, you know, as a friend, like if I know something I can help you with and, you come to me, you know, asking for advice. I'm never going to be like, no, I'm not telling you anything. Like, I'm not that type of person. But you have to let the other person go through their process and not want to expedite their process. Yeah, and, you know, I could kind of sound like a little hypocrite because there's people that tell me, like, oh, my God, you have so much talent. You could be doing this. You could be doing that. You can be making money with this. But it also depends on what that person's ultimate goal is. Mm -hmm. Right. Because like I know I can quit my job and do photography full time and probably be very successful at it. But it's not what I want to do. Right. right? right. True. Like true. even though like I know the trade and I know how to do it, I can do it. I know how to do video. But it's not the big it's not the big goal. It is. It could be a stepping stone. But I, I leave it as a plan B. I, I never push it off completely. So I guess it depends on, on the person as well. On the person's goals. Absolutely. Um, but there are some people who are just oh, not yeah. clear, you know, and or they just start talking about making something happen, but they never take the appropriate steps to, to make it happen. And, and in that case, they're just, they're, they're fully guilty. Because well, and let's be honest, some people are just lazy. Like if you don't, it. if you don't like start the business <laughs> for them and like if it's not making a dollar, like they, they yeah. don't want to put the effort. And to. I've learned that, you know, any business you decide to make, it's going to take hard work and it's going to take patience. That's why they patience say. Patience and a lot of investing. Mm -hmm. That's why they say like most businesses fail within the first five years mm -hmm. because it's extremely difficult. It is. But, you know, you have to have that tunnel vision and you have to be clear on what your end goal is. And you have to have a real purpose. Why? Your why? Your why has to be very strong. Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a strong why, you're going to quit. You're going to quit very easily. If you don't believe in yourself, you're going to quit very easily. If you start for the money, you're going to quit very easily. Very easily. Because nothing starts off super profitable. There's rare occasions where something starts off very profitable. And most of those occasions that start off very profitable die down. Mm hmm because it was something that was maybe, you know, unusual or, you know. It was a trend and you just right. happened to, to right. catch on. So we have to understand our why. And we have to be very strong about what is it that we want and how are we going to get there and setting a plan and a goal. It's so important. And and also have in mind, like, to not, if you, if you feel like you need to do it for them, like, you always need to do it. For the money, right? Like, at the end goal has to be, if you're starting a business, it's like, I need to make money off of it. Because if not, just start a nonprofit. 
right? Yeah. But I mean, you need money to live, so you need to make money. Off. Yeah. So, but love what you do. Don't do it for the money, but the money will come as a byproduct of you doing what you love to do. Right. Just make sure that what you're doing, you love. I feel like, especially where we come from, we can't think of just doing something for passion because we need the money to elevate our families. Um, but just make sure that whatever you choose to do and whatever you, you focus on is something that you enjoy because you're going to have to be doing this for a long time. Yeah, it's like us. Like, you guys, you know, see it out there and, and like, you see, like, the way our content has evolved if you guys are, are not our old OG subscribers and it's taken a lot, a lot of money, equipment, a lot of learning, literally school experiences, <laughs> you know, like all you see all of this and this is part of a business. We started, we treat this as a business that we started a long time ago and you know, we grinding. And it's grinding. been a lot of ups and downs. I think this is the most stable and focused we've been. <laughs> And not, not making money, because we're not making money to, to um, support what we do. No. So we invest in ourselves. This is what we do. We are our own investors at this point. But we believe in our vision. We believe in what we have to offer. We believe in the long-term goal. And so that's why we're here. And we've done a lot. You know, we started a long time ago. We started what? Started with just me in 2015, 15, with the makeup, and then it transitioned to a family channel, 2016, or 2017, around there. But even though we knew we liked the vlogging and all that, we enjoyed, like, photography, and, you know, I was doing makeup at the time. We kind of enjoyed all of that. We still were in our learning phase, yeah. learning ourselves, learning what is it that we enjoy, learning how can we use what our talents to make a business. We were still in the learning phase. We were experimenting with many different things. But now that we have more of a clear picture, we're more focused. We are determined. We've gained so much experience. I, I don't believe it's been years, but I don't believe any of those years were in vain. Yeah. We learned so it's, much. Yeah, so much growth. Especially my husband over here, <laughs> Darwin, has learned so, so much. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Like all the, the photography and videography skills that you learned, the editing, I mean... Can I get a round of applause? <laughs> I, I know that there is um, a lot more for you to learn. We will always be learning. Always learning. Um, but damn, you've really made a huge progress from the moment that we started un up until now. And I feel we are more clearer than ever about where we want to take this. And we're so serious. We're more serious than we've ever been. Yeah. The steps that we've taken in getting this studio should tell you guys how serious we are about this and you know we're so serious to the point where we've changed we're determined this year to change our habits to listen to audible if we don't want ha have time to sit down and read a book at least listen to the books and we're more conscious of like the, what the, the little books that we've read so far have made such a huge yeah. impact on us so far and it just makes such a, a huge difference. If there's anything that I can advise you guys, if you guys want to start a business, if you guys want to invest in yourselves and just maybe you're lost, maybe you don't know what you should be doing and you're trying to find your purpose. All I could tell you is just educate yourselves. Read or listen to Audible. Listen to self-help books that will open up your mind to think a little differently, that will guide you in the right way to get you organized. I think organization is key, especially when yeah. you're parents, because your mind can be so scattered with work and your children that you have no time to really sit down and like get gather your thoughts and really think about what is it that you want to do. But if you feel like you're empty still, like you still have so much digging to do and you're not happy with the work that you do, you want to be uh, your own business owner, whatever it is, start with yourself, with organizing yourself, with organizing your personal life first. 
And then look into what is it that makes me happy and start digging, you know, what is it that you have in your mind? Because we're all different and not everybody wants the same things. But I feel like for me, what has helped me a lot these past few months has been one, having someone to keep me accountable, which would be you and my comadre. Like they're keeping me accountable Mm -hmm. and and just understanding how important it is to take care of myself mentally and physically. Yeah, because once once you take care of yourself, like everything just flows because you're in a better place to take care of other people. But if you in can't a better take mood. care of, yeah, if you can't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of other people? That is key. I can't even stress that enough. And I've known this for years. But sometimes we're very hard-headed and we think that we can make things work our way and that we don't have to do whatever they say we have to do. We want to do things our way because we're that hard-headed. But when you start doing what you have to do, you start getting adequate sleep. You start maybe drinking more water. You start eating healthier, making healthier choices when eating. You know, I'm, I'm, I know you're not going to be perfect. This is not going to be perfect the moment you start. But just baby steps. If it's just starting with you going to bed early, start with just going to bed early. That's how I started, (laughs) you know. But once you start feeling better because you're maybe just getting adequate sleep, then you can go to the next step. And trust me, once you start making it a habit, once you fall off and you see how awful you start feeling again, you want to get healthy again and you want to do it over. So, But you have to stick with it. For a long time, you have to stick with it. You have to be disciplined with yourself. Because if you're not, you're never going to see the result. And you're always going to say, oh, nothing works. Nothing works. You're not working. Yeah, And there, I mean, and there will be days that will be tough and there will be days you slack off. But, you know, find yourself an accountability partner, like you said. Like you, I hold you accountable. Um, Our comadre holds us accountable. And, like, you I never know. accountable. You never know, like, who you are inspiring and like motivating like she inspires me like like i've told you this right like i used to wake up early not as early as i do now but i saw her getting up early and committing and i'm like if she's committing like why can i commit too like i wanted to do it so let's do it together it's an exchange of energies Mm -hmm. and you know it's not like we sometimes we wake up and we do what we gotta do and we talk sometimes we just like both in our own lane like we do what we gotta do and some of you may be asking yourselves like what why are you waking up so early like what are you doing one babe started going to the gym early why because that's the hardest task of the day so he feels like if he knocks it out before he goes to work the hardest part of the day is over and it, there's been days that I w- I've woken up and if I don't go to the gym like I'll I'll start editing and I've edited a whole video uploaded did the thumbnail and published it before me having to leave to work. Right. So it becomes a very productive morning before he even started his day. Because that, that day I was like, <laughs> this is lit. It's, right. It's not even 730 and right. I edited a whole video is up. And this is why also I wanted to get up earlier. Because why? Because I work a nine to five and I need time. I'm also a mom. But I need time to focus on my goals, to focus on what is it that I need to do. So I needed time to, it was, I don't know, educate myself in the morning, gather my thoughts, send out emails for my own business. So when we wake up this early, I don't know what it is about it, but everybody's sleeping. Everything is so quiet and just feels so peaceful. There's just something about waking up really early that makes you feel so productive it is i used to tell you that though like when i when i used to wake up not as early as i do now and you should be like i'm just i'm a night person i'm like yo it's just different like in the morning (laughs) because you just have the energy like it's just there and if you have a task it's more easy for you to accomplish that task i mean i was a hardcore believer that i was not a morning person i was the person who was always saying i'm just not a morning person I embedded this in my head. But one thing I've learned from the books that we're reading is that if you tell yourself these things, 
you're going to feel like you're not a morning person. You're setting yourself up for failure. It's not that you're not a morning person. You're just not getting adequate sleep. You're not going to sleep at the right time. You're not getting the adequate amount of, of hours of sleep. And that's why you're waking up angry, groggy, whatever it is. You wake up, the alarm goes off, and you snooze it, and you snooze it, and you snooze it. And Mel Robbins clearly told me, <laughs> when you snooze, you lose. <laughs> no, when you snooze, you go back into a sleeping cycle that has never left my mind since I read it. I mean, heard it because it was on a podcast. It has not left my mind. So when my phone goes off, I am not going back to sleep because I know that if I close my eyes again, it's over. I'm waking up in a bad mood and I don't want that. I like to wake up feeling like, okay, let's start my day. Let me do my quick prayer. Let me go wash my face, brush my teeth. And get ready for this day. Listen. Just listen to me. <laughs> listen be- to me. She's a believer. I know. it. I mean, it's a proven fact for me now. Yeah. It's not just a book anymore. It's not just a podcast telling me that this is how it works. I have lived experience at this point. I know it works. Even I though I used it. to tell her. but You know, sometimes you just need. (laughs) I'm not enough. I know. Sometimes you just need someone else that isn't your partner, that isn't your mom, that isn't your dad, a professional, you know. Sometimes you need to look at statistics and and the proof that this is how your body works in order for you to be convinced. Whatever it takes, just get educated, people, and do what's right for you. I love how we went from free work to waking up early. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's this is Elevate Podcast. This is what we, we do. do. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, um, so to conclude this topic. Wake up early and charge for your shit. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up early and nothing for free. So value your work. Don't let anybody take away the value of all the hard work and all the time spent on educating yourself on your topic on whatever it is you're an expert on don't let anybody devalue what you have to offer to the world you are valuable what you offer is valuable and remember you are the one who gives what you do value if you do not give what you do value no one is going to see value in it you can have the best skills in your industry but if you do not put value on those skills, nobody will put value, value on them for you. Nobody. Yeah. Well said. We'll end it there. So Yeah, because I could go on and on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's it for today's podcast, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're here on YouTube, don't forget to leave us your comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. According to our statistics, More than half of you are not subscribed to this channel, so please hit the subscribe button (laughs) and join the family. Don't forget to hit the bell so you can be notified every time we post a video. If you are on Spotify, please don't forget to leave your reviews. Um, And, yeah, that's it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Until next time. Peace.